What if we could eliminate radioactive waste? Barrels of hazardous materials that need secure storage. Areas surrounding nuclear power plants like Chernobyl or Fukushima that are dangerous to living organisms. What if they could become inhabitable again? My special guest today to discuss this topic, radioactivity and can it be controlled, is Terence Howard. Terence is best known for his acting career with shows like Empire or movies like Iron Man, but he's also an inventor and a science enthusiast. So let's get right into it and meet Terence to get his thoughts. Thank you, Terence, for, for joining me today. Thank you, Jeff. All right, so now most people know you for acting and uh, not aware that you are an inventor. I found that uh, fascinating. Tell me a little bit more about your patents. How many patents have you filed? Um, I have about 67 patents in uh, technology, molecular excitation, um, in new forms of flight, new forms of lighting, um, a lot in geometry. Uh, I have about 30 copyrights and trademarks associated with the patents that we, we maintained. Um, you and I have this patent now, and Chris and I have another seven patents that has just recently been filed all regarding um, technology. So I think, and that's just patents in the U.S. That's not including the patents around the world. So I think we're 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 nearing a hundred now, if not over a hundred, you know, regarding patents, trademarks, and copyrights. And so let's get back to the uh, patent that you referenced that uh, we worked together on and. Uh, in this case, I'm going to act like the interviewer, and I'm going to be asking you the questions. But for full disclosure, we've worked together on this patent. Well, let's go with the first question. Um, the recently filed uh, patent that uh, you just referred to um, is proposed to speed up the radioactivity process. So what is radioactivity, if you could explain that for listeners, and why would it be beneficial if the radioactivity process was sped up? But under our pressure conditions, we are very sensitive to heat. And the things that we eat are very sensitive to heat, and that's a problem associated with radiation. It heats up everything. It's like a microwave. So to be in a microwave means to literally get cooked. So if we can speed up the process by which the radioactive activity decays, that means things get back to a cooler state or a usable state or a more friendly state where um, our kind can enjoy it. Right. Okay. Um, and I think hopefully almost everyone will agree that if we can speed up that process and radioactive waste is stable again, that it's it's uh, beneficial for everyone. So let's get to the next question then, which I think is really the core of the patent. So why do you believe that it's possible to change the radioactive decay process to speed it up, um, and that it's not a constant of the universe? Well, based upon new studies and tests that have been done, it is, has been shown that from different positions, the radioactive active decay in, increases. When you're closer to the sun, the radioactive decay increases. Now, the, the thing that they have um, theorized coming from the sun is are these neutrinos that are hitting and causing the radioactive decay to increase in itself. Um, if you performed a, a test on radioactive decay taking place near Saturn, it's it, it's a slower process than what takes place between the Earth and Venus. You know, that's what some of these tests have shown. So we're believing that it's the neutrinos coming from the sun that's able to and able to hit them in that close proximity. So if all of these, if A is equal to B and B is equal to C, then A is equal to C. Let us get us an opportunity where we can examine a neutrino gun and point it towards some nuclear waste and see what takes place. Oh, great, great. Okay, and then um, there was there's a paper that actually references some of yeah. the science that you were just talking about. So I'll make sure that um, we add a link to this uh, video so that people can get into the, the details. Um, let me get to the third and final question, which is really why we're here in creating the video, which is what do you need potentially from people listening to this video to help prove this proposed process? So I would ask that 
people like Eric Weinstein. I'd ask people like Ed Franco. I'd ask people like Brian Keating, you know, who have so much concern um, for what's taking place in in our environment to um, use their power and their uh, persuasion to help some of those few handfuls of of laboratories that actually have neutrino guns to allow us to use it or to conduct the experiment and to oversee the experiment and just to allow us to point some of those neutrino guns at some nuclear waste and then let's examine the data and see if it does increase the nuclear the radioactive decay and if that's the case then you know let's get to cleaning up our planet and i'm sure there's a number of universities that have that as a main agenda and a lot of world organi organizations and governments that are really keen on this because if we can use the universe's process its natural process by which it allows radioactive decay to occur um, then I think we will be more balanced. So I'm hoping that there are universities, there are governments, that there are private institutions. If you have influence over other universities that have labs, you know, and you care about radioactive decay, um, we filed the paper um, in August. So we have a year and about 11 more months in which to go and actually be able to um prove this out so i would hope within the next 11 months that the concerned individuals in the world will add their contribution to freeing the earth of this nuclear waste so thank you so much terence for joining today i'll summarize that last part in a visual so that it's clear here's the ask not many labs have the ability to produce neutrino beams but for those that do Let's work together to collect more data. Maybe we're wrong and there's no effect on radioactivity. But maybe we're right. And if we are, well, then we've opened up possibilities to clean up the world from hazardous waste. It's worth a shot, right? And for those that are curious to dig into the details, including some of the experiments that Terence references about the decay time of free neutrons and how it affects radioactivity, you'll find a link in the video description to the paper that he referenced. Thank you for joining today, and if you'd like to get updates on this project, hit the subscribe button below.